feel like in the past few years, as more information is being thrown on the internet, the term crib hour has been thrown around like spaghetti. I don't even know if that's like the right <laughs> terminology, thrown around like spaghetti, do people say that? Whatever, I just did. But I feel like people are hearing all of these terms and not really knowing what they mean. So today we are going to talk all about what crib hour is, when you should use it, and how you should use it, and how crib hour is going to help your baby take longer naps. I know, short naps can be a pain in the butt. But I am here to tell you guys today how Crib Hour is going to help your baby stretch your naps longer. Hey guys, my name is Missy Yando. I'm the owner of Slumber and Bloom. I'm a certified pediatric sleep consultant with over 15 years of experience helping hundreds and hundreds of families. And today I'm gonna help you with your baby's short naps. First things first, before I even jump into talking about what Crib Hour is and how to use it, it is so important that your baby already has independent sleep skills. That means that your child is falling asleep independently at bedtime and that they can put themselves back to sleep throughout the night. So the actual crib hour is, are you ready for this? It is when your baby is in the crib for one full hour from the time of sleep onset. So for example, if you put your baby in the crib at 8.45 a.m. for their first nap and they fall asleep at 9 a.m. but they wake up at 9.45 a.m., you do not get them out of the crib until say it with me, 10 a.m. So that means yes, your baby is in the crib for an hour and 15 minutes, but crib hour is speaking directly to the 60 minutes that your baby is in the crib from the minute they fell asleep. Now the purpose and the point of this is that your baby is being left in the optimum sleep environment in order to fall back asleep and learn how to connect their sleep cycles at nap time. So like I already said before, your child needs to have this independent sleep skill at night and throughout the night before you can use this at nap time. A lot of times people will do night training and nap training at the same time, but if you are dealing with a major sleep debt or a very overtired child, I highly recommend only doing bedtime and through the night first, letting them catch up during the day, and then once their night sleep has consolidated by jumping into naps next. Now on average, a baby's sleep cycle is 30 to 45 minutes. So when your child is taking a short nap, it really just means that they are sleeping for one sleep cycle, and then when they wake up, they can't get themselves back to sleep to connect to another sleep cycle. So you need to teach them how and that they can do this independently. So what I always recommend is not intervening during crib hour. So even if your child only slept for 30 minutes, leave your child in the crib for an additional 30 minutes. They need to be in the perfect sleep environment in order to fall back asleep independently, connect another sleep cycle, and take a solid nap. Ideally, every single day, your child will be taking at least two one hour naps. I would love to see an hour and a half nap, but I understand that not every baby is capable of doing that, which is why crib hour is only used for ages six months and up. Okay, so anything under six months old, we don't use crib hour because biologically naps are not regulated until six months old. So there is just no possible way that using crib hour is going to be productive before six months old. So the next most commonly asked question when it comes to crib hour is, when does their wake window begin? So if your baby is only sleeping from nine to 9.30 and you leave them in the crib until 10, their next wake window is going to go from their out of crib time. A lot of times you will see some abbreviations in the sleep training world like ST equals sleep training and OOC means out of crib. So when you take your child OOC out of crib, then you start the next wake window. So you are not starting that wake window from 9.30 when they may have woken up from a 30 minute nap. You are leaving them in the crib until 10 a.m. and then the next wake window begins at 10 a.m. Now, 
Leading to another question that parents might ask, well, isn't this going to make my child overtired? Isn't this going to make my child's wake window a half hour longer than it should be? Yes and no. So yes, it's technically a wake window and they are awake for some of that time and hopefully they actually learn to connect that cycle and fall back asleep. But practice makes progress here. You have to deal with some discomfort during sleep training, including nap training, in order for your child to make strides towards better sleep. So leaving your child in the crib for that extra half hour, 15 minutes, whatever it may be, is going to encourage them to fall back asleep, but they're also still getting rest. They're in the perfect environment. They're not being stimulated. They're not exerting energy. Maybe they're just laying there quietly waiting for you to come and get them. And maybe they're crying. And if your baby is crying, it's okay. If they are hysterically crying and you absolutely can't take it, then go get your kid and try again the next day. So this is definitely a process where practice makes progress and it's not always easy, but I promise you that using crib hour is going to help your child connect their sleep cycles during nap time and it will help them to take longer naps. Now I do have a free download for a guide to naps in the description box. Click the link down below and put in your info so I can send it to you in your inbox. You are going to get a chart that is going to describe every single age and everything that you can expect for naps at that age. It's really important to have realistic expectations of baby sleep and not to just expect everything to be perfect all the time. Remember that progress is not linear. You're gonna have ups and downs. There's gonna be hills and valleys and you have to put the work into it. And it's important to know what is actually realistic and to have realistic expectations. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Click this playlist over here for more baby sleep training advice, click this button over here to subscribe to my channel and keep blooming. Mm -hmm.